We are coming to the end of this small home office build project. A quick preview of this episode. I will be getting the door ready and hanging the door myself, as well as getting the, the planing done and the hinges set and the door lock of this door. Uh, the skirting is going to be, be cut down to size. It's going to be uh, painted with the varnish and set up ready for finishing, as well as the final few coats of paint will be going on as well I'm supposed to use this fancy roller which was a bit of a nightmare so you'll stay tuned for that little mess up there so with the door itself you're basically gonna get a door to the size of your frame this is a hardwood exterior uh, door and it's a six panel door so what i did was i measured the door checked for any spots which were uneven and obviously the the cowboy builders uh, left uh, so a couple of the frames were not straight so this is a little bit disappointing however we had to adjust for that and I, I made a slight adjustment with the planing down the door and with the hinges i'll show you how i did the hinges as well i used a swiss army knife because i couldn't find my standing blade and cut out some slanted pieces of where my hinge will go and then chisel that out with a chisel and i found that worked quite nicely remember this is hard wood this is an oak door so it will be a uh, troublesome as long as you've got a sharp knife and a chisel and you sharpen it in between you should be okay and you can see here the, the you know he did a good job i used a chisel a hammer and just cut out those little specific uh, pieces to allow me to fit the hinge in i'm going to move the door over uh, just to the frame as a quick little trick here you can stick a little pipe or a screwdriver on the bottom of the door and you can hang a door yourself so it's a single person job put one screw in in the top hinge and then one in the bottom which allows you to test the door and see if there's any spots which are causing the door any issues so overall this wasn't a bad process you can have about what an hour hour and a half worth of uh, work here just to hang the door and maybe two hours if you're going to hang the the locks as well and cut out for the the locks so i found a few spots which were not ideal so i just adjusted the hinges slightly to take them into the frame a little bit more and used a planer just to plane off the door um, ideally I could have planed the frame to keep it straight but I thought you know it may be easier just to do the door because I can take the door entirely off and put it on the floor um, and you can see I'm slotting out the hinges on the frame itself just to create the, the relevant space and the door hangs nicely it swings opens easily with a three millimeter gap all the way around the outside and that's going to allow for contraction and over time as the door expands obviously it is wood i have got a run seal varnish so i'm going to be clearing coating clear coating it in varnish as well just to give it a weatherproof protection because rain obviously and things will get in the way of this you'll see i've only put a screw in there just to hold it in position and to get it ready and it works nicely we'll need to get some trim for around the outside of the door and a, a, a brush for the bottom as well to stop any uh, uh, drafts coming through on the door so that's essential so keep an eye out for future episodes which i might i might keep it all in one episode this might be the final episode i want to keep all the pieces together so remember uh, the builders have gone now i've told them to go and i'm finishing off all the work myself as of today it's the 4th of april that i'm voiceovering on this video and i had a few of these recorded from a couple of weeks ago so i thought i'll get them all out now and then start on the next project so you will also see uh, further down the line I'm doing a kitchen out and I'm also partitioning a house and making a bathroom like a, a single toilet so keep an eye out for that video coming up in the next few weeks or so and um, so this uh, project you'll remember i hired some builders and did the entire work in the pinned comment you can see the article that supports this post uh, this video which basically gives you descriptions and information about if you're deciding to make an extension or a small house in the back of your own house all the planning permission the consent all the questions you would need to ask setting up builders etc finding builders all that kind of thing is helpful to you in that pinned comment and in the description so keep an eye on that you can see now what i'm doing here is actually going through and just setting up the rock lock so i uh, drilled out for the lock and uh, the frame itself so that was all like uh, within like two hours i had all of that set up basically and there's a couple of screws that i need to put into here which need the big heads and the lock works nicely the door uh, latch works correctly so all of that's been set up and ready to use and i like the door it is a nice solid oak door a lot of people get the pvc uh, double glazed doors but i'm not too keen on those the quality on those is just shoddy you can kick out the plastic bits out of that very easily so you can see here now the the skirting is coming along so skirting board is a four inch skirting board all cut to 45 degrees on the corners and all varnished up ready to be installed around the edge of the the room so this was another maybe a day's worth of work half a day depending on how 
smoothly things go. Um, again, the plaster on the wall wasn't as even as it could be. So it's a little bit disappointing uh, that some walls are out, considering the whole extension has been built from the floor up by the, the builders. So you may have seen some of the earlier episodes of this series. If you check the playlist, you'll see a lot more of that. And the skirting board's been set up, the door's been done. And we double coat the door with the internal grade varnish and the external door was done in the external varnish. And if you have the correct tools, it can be nice and easy, especially with the miter saw to cut out these 45 degrees, especially using the electronic one. You could use a hand one if you wanted to. You had a small job. For example, this is a small room, so you could technically use a hand saw. And the joints butt up nicely and these are three meter lengths. Um, inside but we had to put a joint because obviously our room is like five meters long so remember this extension is 2.5 meters by five meters long so we've got a nice uh, location basically we haven't decided exactly what's going to happen it may be like a computer office room and finish off with all the architraves i can never say that word the ones that go around the door so we've got some storage shelves in here that will be remaining here just to have some extra storage as well as we're going to paint one of the walls in a different color. So remember in the previous episode I mentioned I got this purpley color, uh, like an aubergine type color. So always mix your paint when you get it with a mixer and you can use a number of ways to apply this to the wall. And what I did do here was I used uh, this... I, I, th I thought I'd give it a shot, but it was just very shoddy. It's like a plastic uh, tray that you use this sponge form and apparently it won't get um paint on the walls like the adjacent walls so obviously i want to paint one wall but not get paint all over the others so without masking it so what i did do i didn't trust it so i put a piece of wood down just to see would it work and you'll notice here it didn't really work so that line on the wood would have been what would have been on the the far wall wall so on the line the straight line wasn't really straight either so i thought mm, okay let's be careful of this maybe it might be better just to use a a masking tape so looking at this trying to do it sideways you have to have a very steady hand i did in the middle of the wall first just to see if it would actually work and it got little bits of paint on the side so see it's not really doing what it's supposed to do i got a bigger piece of wood i just followed it down to see if that would help and it, it i had to pull away so i'm not sure i should have just used a, a brush and done it by hand that's how i've always done in the past so these fancy new gizmos and gizm you know things you always see is it jlb jlb tv adverts you always see them on the qbc kind of thing oh yeah you can do this and do that and they try and sell it to you but it never works so yeah i ended up doing it by brush and moving the board along and it did okay but this wall is going to be an accent color the reason we're doing a darker color is it's a long thin room 2.5 meters by 5 meters so it will look a bit narrow having one dark wall kind of makes it look a bit more nice and you won't notice that it's a narrow thin room i could have got a really good finish with a brush so i just don't know why i carried on using this but i thought i'll give it a shot but you'll see the line when i move the board away it's not like a, a nice clean line it's just disappointing so if you're ever thinking about doing this just use a brush steady hand and that would work a lot better for you than this uh, this shoddy thing that's just a waste of time i think so yeah the remaining uh, wall here is going to be painted with a roller just to get it all the right color and that's the accent wall i have also got the flooring an oak effect eight millimeter uh, laminate flooring which will be cut down you'll see uh, me fitting that in this episode i wanted to keep this all together just as a final episode just to show you how this all comes together so i cleared the room i uh, left the paint to dry for that accent wall and the room looks a little bit more square now as opposed to a long triangle uh, long uh, rectangle so i pulled out the skirting and did all the painting and the floor before we put the skirting boards on the walls so what happens is if you buy skirting boards and you're doing a new room and you're going to have laminate flooring do your laminate flooring first so you can leave the millimeter expansion gap around the floor under the plasterboard because there's some space under there rather than do it up put it up against your skirting board and then you have to buy these special beads to hide the gaps around the wall separately so the, if you're doing it this way it's a better idea to do the skirting after you lay your floor that's really what we did here so you'll notice now the little bits and bobs a nice jigsaw with a, a new fresh blade with a fine cutting blade always cut uh, upside down 
and there's different types of insulation you can get, like an underlay for the laminate flooring. You notice here I've got like a foam. It's about one or two mil, and it's got a, a silver foil layer underneath, underneath it for like a vapor barrier. You can get bigger ones if you want to, but this worked nicely because obviously the floor should already be insulated. Well, it is insulated because they put insulation in the cement, and there shouldn't be any issues here, but you never know. So using that, we just cut down the foam, put the pieces down the floor, and started doing the laminate flooring. So you'll see a time lapse of that. I'll let you watch this now next piece If you have a little bit of DIY skills, you should be able to get through this very easily. It's very easy to clip the floorboards together and put them on the insulation. As long as you stagger them out, you should be okay. The main time they're taken is just the edges, the spaces, and fitting around any doors or any issues like that. So you'll notice we used one of these cutters, oscillating cutters, to cut under the fra frame of the, the doors, just so the expansion gap is remaining on this so overall the floor has been built everything's set up now and this episode you saw the full floor being laid as well as the doors being hung and everything ready as it shows in a later episode i might start showing you what's going to be used this what i'm going to be using this room for so stay tuned for future episodes and i'll see you on the next one